Hey hey guys, Adam here with another educational video. In this video, we'll be exploring the mysteries of roll rate, how it works, and hopefully clear up some misconceptions as usual. Roll isn't as easy to understand and visualize as turn, so bear with me. Without further ado, let's roll right into it. First off, what is roll? A roll is when the aircraft rotates around its centerline axis going from the nose to the tail. To be able to roll, the aircraft deflects its ailerons in opposite directions to generate the torque to accelerate and sustain the roll. The aileron that deflects downwards deflects air downwards as well, which produces extra lift on the right side of the wing, making it go up. The opposite happens for the left aileron to produce downforce to push the left side of the wing down. Together. The deflected ailerons make the aircraft roll left or counterclockwise. Now we should be asking ourselves the following question. If the ailerons are continuously generating torque, why doesn't the roll rate constantly increase? In other words, what is the counter force that eventually makes you reach the sustained roll speed? Many have said that it's the air resistance on the rolling wings that counter the torque from the ailerons, but that's not quite true, and I'll get to the reasoning very soon. That reasoning does contain the right logic, however. When an aircraft rolls, it's not simply rolling on itself. It's also moving through the air at a certain forward speed, so it's not a pure rotation. Rather, this is a helical motion in the air, as you can see from the red chemtrails trailing my wingtips in the TA-152H. This is important, because this helical motion will generate the, the torque that counters the ailerons. This is a screenshot of the T-152H rolling left or counterclockwise, so the wing closest to you has a downwards vertical speed while the aircraft is moving forward. Based on the T-152H's wingspan of 14.44 meters and a roll rate of 120 degrees per second, the vertical wingtip speed is 15 meters per second. The forward speed is of course 370 km per hour, which is equal to 103 meters per second. With both of these speeds, we find an angle of 8.4 degrees, and that's the angle of attack that the wingtip sees. Remember, the greater the angle of attack, the greater the lift. Notice that the angle of attack is positive on the descending wing, which means that the wing is generating lift, and that lift counters the roll torque from the ailerons as the roll rate increases, eventually reaching the sustained roll rate. The same logic applies to the ascending wing, where it sees a negative angle of attack which generates negative lift, counteracting the positive lift from the aileron. Now we are ready to understand the broad aspects of the seemingly complicated roll rate equation. This is the sustained roll rate equation. Omega x is the sustained roll rate. The term circled in blue represents aileron effectiveness at generating roll torque. And the term circled in red represents roll damping or the counteracting torque from the wings. Aileron effectiveness depends on the size and position of the ailerons, their maximum deflection angle, and their relative surface area compared to the wing. Roll damping mainly depends on wingspan, true airspeed, and aspect ratio. I estimated these coefficients for a few aircraft using general formulas and got essentially the same values as in the War Thunder flight model data files. One big exception being the Typhoon. I do not yet know what gives the Typhoon such poor roll. If anyone has information on that, let me know. Already we see that speed is in the numerator, so we should expect roll rate to increase as speed increases. Theoretically, as you can see on this TA-152H roll rate as a function of a speed graph, roll rate should increase linearly with speed. However, to simulate control stiffening at high speed, aircraft cannot fully deflect their control surfaces past a certain indicated airspeed. For the TA-152H, it can fully deflect its ailerons until 360 km per hour IS, but beyond that speed, the ailerons can no longer deflect fully, which reduces roll rate. On this graph, you can see the theoretical roll rate using the formula and taking into account control stiffening in blue, and the test flight roll rate in red. The reason why the test flight roll rate is significantly higher than the theoretical roll rate is because I'm not taking into account secondary contributors to roll, such as rudder, side slip, and dihedral. The theoretical curve still predicts the correct tendency, however. You can clearly see that the roll rate increases until it reaches the control stiffening speed of 360 km per hour, 
and then decreases beyond that speed. Different aircraft will have different control stiffening speeds, and that's what makes the handling good or bad at high speed. Another effect of roll rate being proportional to true airspeed is that for a constant IAS, roll rate increases as altitude increases. On this graph of TA152H roll rate as a function of altitude, roll rate increases exponentially with altitude. The points are test flight roll rates which follow the theoretical trend. Test roll rates are higher for the same reason given previously. The reason why true airspeed increases roll rate is because the higher the speed for a given roll rate, the lower the angle of attack will be, so the lower the roll damping will be. Wingspan and speed combined give the helical wingtip speed, which is an important factor in roll rate. So, how can you increase the roll rate on an aircraft? You can increase aileron size and deflection, add spoilers, use hydraulically boosted ailerons, but all these solutions add weight or are impractical. The last option is to saw the wingtips off to reduce wingspan, hence improving roll rate, such as on the Spitfire Mark 16. The Mark 9 and the Mark 16 have essentially identical flight models, so let's compare the two in the rolling department. On this roll rate graph, we have the Spitfire Mark 9 in blue and the clipped Mark 16 in red. By reducing the wingspan of the Mark 16 by 1.3 meters or 12%, the Mark 16 enjoys a big increase in roll rate over the Mark 9. The test flight points confirm this advantage. However, the consequence of cutting the wingtips is a big reduction in maneuvering energy retention. In reality, aircraft that don't have counter or contra rotating propellers experience engine torque. If the engine spins the propeller clockwise, the aircraft will experience counterclockwise torque due to Newton's law which will improve roll in the counterclockwise direction, but worsen roll in the clockwise direction. The Spitfire Mark 9's prop spins clockwise, so we should expect our counterclockwise or left roll to be faster than the right roll. A quick test shows that both roll directions have equal roll rates in realistic battles. Torque is turned off in RB while it's on in simulator battles. Now let's go over roll stability. Calling it roll stability is a bit of a misnomer because it's not quite roll stability, but everyone calls it that. Roll stability is the tendency of an aircraft to return to wings level flight after a disturbance in the roll axis. On low mounted wings, dihedral is used to provide roll stability. Dihedral makes the wings point upwards, so when an aircraft has a bank angle and starts to side slip in the direction of the bank angle, there is a small component of the airflow that is now horizontal and this horizontal airflow pushes up on the downwing and down on the higher wing thanks to the dihedral, eventually restoring the aircraft to level flight. You can see an example of this in the Contra rotating Seafire 47. In simulator mode with a joystick, I give it a bank angle and let go of the stick, and the aircraft slowly but surely returns to wings level flight. As mentioned previously, roll doesn't only concern ailerons and wings, though they are the main components of roll. It's possible to use the rudder in conjunction with the ailerons to roll faster or even snap roll, like in this dogfight between the P-51 and the Yak-3. There are other aspects to roll that I haven't talked about which explain snap rolls, but it's a step above what this video deals with. With this video, you should have a better idea of how an aircraft will roll just by looking at its wings. Remember, big ailerons and small wingspan leads to better roll rates. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and let me know in the comments what educational topics you'd like to see covered in the future. Cheers!